almost as good as having a theme song. I like it. I'm hearing an echo. Are you? Let me see what I can do about that. And we'll work through that. Welcome, everybody. I think it's good. Okay, let's. Nope, still no good. Check one, two, check one, two. Check, check, check. Check, goody, check, check. I'm good. I'm good. All right. We're All fine. Right, great. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, and the audience can tell me if I'm correct about not having an echo. Uh, welcome. This is Juggling Lessons Channel. We like to do SE. We like to do street epistemology. And I have as my very special guest today, Chase Avior. Hey, you're, thank you. Thank Chase you. Thank you. Behavior. Rhymes with behavior. behavior. Rhymes Excellent. with behavior. Bad behavior. Naughty behavior. Okay. Is that that might be a separate claim? That's okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm a fan of naughtiness as long as yeah. it's calculated and doesn't harm people. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so uh I I I watched some of Chase's stuff and and I am of the opinion that he's a really good advocate for the vegan position. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Tell and me about me yourself, Chase. Well, let me just make sure that there's no uh, delay either. Does this sound good? You sound good, and it looks to my eye that you are aligned with your video. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so a little bit of my background. Um, I ate animals for 26 years uh, and never really thought about it because it's not an issue that's discussed much in society. And yeah. And I hadn't seen any slaughterhouse videos or anything like that. Um, and I was just, you know, I was just used to a socially acceptable norm. Yep. And uh, but then uh, I don't want to go too far into it. But in like 2009, um, I saw a movie called District 9, a okay. sci-fi movie um, set in the future where aliens crash land on Earth and the humans exploit the aliens vulnerability because the aliens mm -hmm. have some kind of illness. And mm -hmm. it got me thinking about discrimination um oh yeah because they weren't human and yeah. um but they still it, had you know, it was so about racism i loved that movie yeah. you know it, I, they I were, was so, it was so weird having that ship floating in the air you had to you go to helicopter kid and it was like stuck but it was still floating that's yeah. some cool tech yeah district nine is a really cool movie uh but yeah i was just like well they're not human these aliens but they still mm -hmm. value their lives and they have kids that they care about and stuff and they're yeah. not trying to hurt us so uh, and then the next day I was eating a steak and I was like, I'm discriminating against animals the way for not being human in the same way that the humans I was disagreeing with last night uh, were discriminating against the aliens for not being human. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nobody gets to choose how they're born. <laughs> right. So anyways, uh, so so uh, I've been uh, vegan for like 12 years. And um, shortly after I made that little revelation, then I saw some slaughterhouse videos and that angered me and uh, motivated me to become an activist. Cool. Cool. And in that time uh, I've gone to like 200 protests, uh, a lot of them just by myself uh, and some with like, I've led a March with a thousand vegans behind me and good times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it when people use those kinds of means as persuasion. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of different effective forms of advocacy and activism. I really am a big fan of street epistemology. Um, you know, I, I also do debates and then mm -hmm. I do, you know, uh, these super polite conversations. And I find that using street epistemology in the mix can often mm -hmm. really, really help. And uh, and, you know, I've I've practiced street epistemology um, once, I think so. But I've mm. watched. I've watched probably 200 SE videos mm. from, mm -hmm. you know, Virtual Curiosity and yourself and uh, Anthony Magnabosco. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah, I'm a big fan. Cool, cool. But cool, cool. at the same time, protest, you know, getting on a megaphone is also, uh, you know, historically and uh, sociologically shown to be an effective form of activism as well. But we can get into yes. that another time. Yes, it is. Yes. And I, I, I really specifically want to call out and honor peaceful, noisy, disruptive, Overton window stretching mm -hmm. kind of nonviolence. Uh, non yeah, nonviolence. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and stretch those Overton windows, make people react and, and check out their positions. Right. I think that's really good stuff. Your claim animal, sorry, slaughter is animal cruelty. Let's just hit definitions first. 
Mm -hmm. uh, slaughter relates to animals, not to trees. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about whether we're slaughtering humans. This isn't about war. This is about farming. Yeah, um, though humans are animals, uh, and you can absolutely. slaughter a human, but we're and not slaughtering them in war. I think is absolutely cruelty. I think that's a much easier claim to mm -hmm. to real. <laughs> yeah, killing people bad. Right. Yes. Uh, and, and I am a I'm a human rights activist. chickens is what we're talking about. Right, right. But I am a human rights activist as well. But go ahead. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, so you're asking for a definition of slaughter. I, I, I'm just asking if that if that's the definition you're doing. Yeah, if you want to give yeah. me a, a clear one, I love it. Yeah, I might just add to that. Um, yeah, so we're talking about like um, any kind of animal. Uh, so it doesn't even have to be, you know, farmed animals. This could also mm -hmm. apply to hunting deer or whatever. Um, okay. And so it's based. And yeah, yeah. So slaughter. And that just means the killing of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there a ranking of animal types where it's more or less cruel? I would say, well, um, we might need to define cruel. Um, mm -hmm. I, and, I invite you to define cruel first, okay. if, you, if, that, if that's the right yeah, word. If that's okay, um, and then we can go through kind of a, uh, you know, some kind of value system. Uh, so cruelty, uh, you know, can have a few different definitions, and we'll choose one. You know, it can mean um, causing someone harm, whether, you know, to a human or an animal, I'm going to use someone because they're not objects, right? They're someone sure. things and stuff. Okay. So, uh, okay. so part of your play, part of your claim is at least some fraction of personhood for animals. Yes, definitely. Full, per full personhood, but yeah. So, okay. So, uh, what am I doing? Cruelty. Uh, I'm basically, it, it could be considered, you know, cruelty to humans or animals. Um, whether it's uh, intentional or not, but, uh, you know, or, you know, often it's more often used, you know, when you're saying it was intentional or like callous mm -hmm. indifference to their suffering. Uh, so that's kind of how we're going to be using it as opposed to um, like I walk across the yard and unknowingly and unintentionally step on an ant and it's unavoidable yeah. because they're tiny and they're everywhere. It's, yeah cruel in one sense because it caused harm but it's not cruel because i didn't have cruel intentions and that kind of thing okay. to not equivocate are you speaking in the it happens in, in independent of intent or is this cruelty that is cruel because it's intentional that's is, what we're going for the, the, we're going the, one, that, yes, the one that has the, intent in it the one yes so it's cruel yep. if it has the intention of being cruel or of being indifferent to the suffering and okay. and that it's and that it's not necessary in these kinds of things. It's avoidable. Okay. okay. Uh, and then, and then if I could, uh, okay. And then I think, yeah, so that's definitions. Go ahead. Very good. Uh, so we got, yes, very good. Uh, mostly I see this as a normative or a moral or a should kind of claim. Uh, it, as, as in, if we followed this rule, the world would be better or the world would be. Tell me, is that, is that correct? Well, that if we follow this rule? Yeah. Yeah. Eventually that's the point is that um, this is an atrocity that must be stopped as soon as possible and must be taken mm -hmm. seriously. Um, uh, and yeah, then we can get into law and all that stuff later, but yeah. Yeah. Law might be another day. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's, it, Cause it's complex hot topic. Right, so, right. Is there any is there anything that um, yeah I'm 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 going back to David Hume is from an ought or mm -hmm. ought from is mm -hmm. is there any component of this that's a quantifiable a scientific kind of component can we measure cruelty to any well, animal for example well I I, so I whatever system we're using to analyze human rights I'm using mm -hmm. the same system. Or whatever system okay. we're using to evaluate if I were to say instead of slaughter is animal cruelty, kicking a dog is animal cruelty. Mm -hmm. Like needlessly kicking a dog. The dog's yeah. not attacking anybody or anything. They're just minding their own business. We don't need to kick this dog. Right. So whatever system we're using for that. Uh, and, and I would say that the, I don't, you know, uh, I use, you can tell me if this is the is odd gap because I've been trying to figure that out myself not just in this issue or anything but just like how that whole thing works because mm -hmm. i think what we tend to do is use science and philosophy like in combination so 
we will look, we will use the science to see that both humans and animals uh, are sentient beings because we have brains and central nervous systems. So we feel pain and pleasure and we have a desire to live. There's a subject inside who's experiencing this life. And, uh, and so we use that science to realize that. And then we uh, base our moral philosophy around that. Hopefully, mm -hmm. if we care about others, and this may be on a conditional, like if you care about the well-being of sentient beings, then you should go vegan kind of thing, you know, and you should okay. realize that slaughter is animal cruelty and take action. I, I might be able to explain it further, but I don't want to rant. And maybe you can help guide me in explaining I this. Have questions I can ask. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so it seems that it's the internal experience, the subjective experience of the animal that matters to you. Yeah, because otherwise we'd just be talking about a chair or a plant that uh, let's go with a plant since it's an actual living organism instead of just a completely inanimate object. So uh -huh. the science is showing clearly that that animals are sentient. Except okay. maybe there might be some, you know, uh, edge cases of like m clams or mollusks or, you know, bivalves okay. or something like this. But, uh, you know, gray areas that we can talk about. But um, the science is clear that animals are sentient, feel pain and pleasure and want to live. Uh, okay. There is no such scientific consensus about sentience of plants um, because they lack sure. a brain, because they lack a brain or nervous system. Yeah, but I'm open to seeing new science, you know. Sure. Uh, so, okay, did that answer your question, or it? I think it did. But halfway in, what was your question? Let me make sure. Uh, it uh, was. It was about the cruelty component being tied to the inner experience, the yeah. subjective experience of the right. animal, uh, right? In question. Yeah. So, so for, it seems for, like there might be a sequencing of animals where you think some may not qualify or some qualify less or something like that. That's, yes. Is, that, is that an important part of your claim? Yeah. But remind me of that in one second, because I wanted to say that if if we found a plant that was sentient, then we need to find a way, if we can, to morally respect that sentient plant. And similarly, okay. if we find an animal who is not sentient, then there's no need to extend moral consideration to that living mm -hmm. organism because they're not sentient. It's, it's, it's all about sentience. Um, I'm thinking of a little shop of horrors. Hell no. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Uh, the then, of sentience in the plant. Anyway. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that covers that. And then as far as the like value hierarchy that we were discussing. Um, yeah. So yeah, of course the, the bottom level is non sentient stuff. Um, I care about the trees and things uh, because they provide a source of food and mm -hmm. help the environment and that kind of thing, help wildlife. Um, yeah. But only because plants serve a purpose for sentient beings. Uh, and so they're okay. down here, right? And then we've got um, those animals that I was talking about that like might not be sentient because the science isn't clear yet or I haven't done enough research on those like bivalves, bivalves or, you know, like, sure. um, but in any case, and then um, uh, I guess, a, you know, the higher the sentience goes mm -hmm. and the, like the longer the lifespan, right. Mm -hmm. Cause that's more experiences, you know, like decades, mm -hmm. like for example, like an ant, you know, lives like a month or something. I don't know for sure, but you know, it's a short lifespan mm -hmm. for an ant. And, and it seems like they have, a uh, lower degree of sentience, perhaps, mm -hmm. than say a dog, uh, mm -hmm. and so I would put the the dog lives, uh, you know, not a month, but you know, twelve years or more, mm -hmm. um, and that dog, you know, seems to have more complex family relationships. Um, I, you know, but we we don't want to discount the ant either, though, you know, and so mm -hmm. I do my best to not cause harm to ants. If they're in my house, I try to pick them up and get them out. Sometimes though, if you're infested, you know, I understand and you got to do what you got to do to not get bugs crawling on you while you're sleeping. But, uh, so another thing though, so, so in, when I'm creating like a value hierarchy, whether mm -hmm. it's humans or animals, there's, I think like five or six things that I take into account. So like I was talking about uh, level of sentience, okay. life lifespan, because that means how many, uh, sentient experiences within mm -hmm. your life um uh familial relationships 
Like mm -hmm. we're talking about a human who has, you know, all else being equal and the train is coming down the track. Right. And they're both tied mm -hmm. to the track. Okay. And I can only save one. If, if it's a human who has a family that they love and that cares about them versus a human who has no family or mm -hmm. friends or anything like this, no social connections, then I'm going to save the person who has a family because mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to bring a bunch of heartache to more people. So it's like a utilitarian calculus. Mm -hmm. uh, so similarly, uh, okay, so so um, sentience level, lifespan, uh, familiar relationship, like social relationships, mm -hmm. um, situation in the sense of like, are they going to cause more harm to the world or no harm? Like, are they a predator or oh, a prey okay. animal. So I would, you know, the trains come down the tracks, I would give preference to the deer over the okay. lion because the lion, right. if they live, will go on to eat, you know, to kill, um, you know, one deer, a bunch, per of, deer. Week, a bunch mm -hmm. of deer, a thousand deer, you know, where the, whereas the deer is just going to go eat grass, you know? Uh, so, uh, so that, so um, that would be like whether or not they're going to harm us, harm anybody or not, and how much they're going to harm. And then, Another criteria would be, oh, I guess this one's just a bias probably. So not really justified, but still one of the things that I and probably everybody would factor in is, do I know this individual, right? Like, mm -hmm. is, is this person a, a friend of mine or is it a stranger? Because it's the bird, right? Friend and, of mine, yeah. And, and I'll tell you, yeah, for sure. That's a cute bird right there. Is that a rooster? It is. Nice. What's his their name? Miles. Miles? His name is Miles. He's very, very old. Uh, how yeah, old? He's had a lot of lifespan. Um, more than ten. Oh wow! Yeah, that's amazing. And for, yeah. for a bantam chicken, yeah, that's, that's really old. His uh, it is his right. His right foot's not doing so well this year. Okay, we'll see if it heals. But you know, yeah. uh, mm. but first of all, bantam chickens can fly. So oh, cool. a fully flying bird with only one leg is only a little disabled. Okay, sweet. All right, all right, because they can flap around pretty good. That's good. Yeah, he can, he can, he can hop and uh, and get places. Yeah, they're great. You're lucky to have him, and he's lucky to have you. Yeah. Um, and, and and I'll say whether it's this bird or another bird, mm -hmm. uh, I I can definitely think of a situation where I would save the bird over a human because mm -hmm. there's some pretty bad humans out there. Mm -hmm. Just imagine the worst politician you mm -hmm. can think of. Uh, For sure. And <laughs> I'm hearing that you say that the value of the worst human is, is less than the value of the best bird. Definitely. And I and mean, needing uh, to needing to dice that further is not important. Well, I mean, I'm willing to look into anything further. I could be right. wrong about my assessment there, but I I base it off of like so. For example, in in the case we just we just explained, um, if you got a serial killer like an unrepentant, see because sure. uh, because with humans, you know, there's this hope that there's you know for transformation sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I used to be a pretty bad guy, you know, and I've changed. So and I have hope for most people and even slaughterhouse workers. Most of them don't want to be there. They just have no better option of where to work. Uh, sure. Some of them though are like super brutal. Um, cause it can, the process can desensitize you and traumatize you and, sure. you know, anyways, but so I, I try to have that hope, but it's, it's based on their past history. It looks like they're going to keep serial killing. Right. And mm -hmm. th this little bird ain't going to do nothing to nobody. Uh, so again, another utilitarian calculus of mm -hmm. saving more lives and, and but this <laughs> bird a bugs though. But this bird, true, that's true, yeah. But this bird is less sentient than that human mm -hmm. and has a lower lifespan. And yeah. yet I give them more weight because of the brutality that this human's going to cause. So lifespan's an interesting one for me. Okay. I'm going to put him over here so he doesn't distract me too much. Sure. Lifespan's an interesting one for me because I think different animals experience life at different speeds. Okay. I hadn't thought of that. I'm going to give you an example of the slowest that I know of. That's the sloth. So slow that the moss can grow on them. And now, does that mean reaction time, their thinking time, I think, is runs on a different time scale. Okay. And I think birds live at a higher speed than I do. Yeah, they're super like. Phew. Yeah. If you want to really think about it, imagine just imagine a mouse or a rodent cruising across the floor. How many decisions do they make per second compared to I'm cruising along and I have one to three seconds for every like. Oh, uh, yeah. right, right. And, and the mouse is doing 10, 10 per second. 
maybe. Mm. Does this that cool. matter? Because because it was about experience. I had never considered that. Okay, you're brilliant. In addition to being incredibly good looking. <laughs> no, but so flattery will get you everywhere. I'm sure it will. And so, how do we look at this? I, I'm going to have to probably also take a few days thinking about this and like okay. looking into the different kind of animals and their experiences more. Yeah. Um, and, and like I like that had been kind of clear earlier that there's that gray area that I'm not really um, too educated on. You know, like I never did well in biology and that kind of thing. So these uh, these mollusks and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, I, I'm not sure yet, um, but. Uh, I do know that like the UK declared that like lobsters and crabs and, and these kinds of uh, beings are sentient. Mm, um, okay. But uh, let me see. I don't want to get off topic. Uh, so the, the, we were talking about different speeds of experience and how that might um, factor into essentially the level of sentience or the, the uh, quantitative yeah, the, the value, value of a particular life being sentient experience times opportunity. Right. Something like and, that. And how, and, and we might, yeah. And so we might want to see if that's relevant at all. And, okay. and if I should remove it from my uh, value mm -hmm. hierarchy system, mm -hmm. um, uh, or if it is still a valid thing to include in the hierarchy this uh, uh, experience, yeah, the, the timing yeah. of the experience, the you know, not the duration, but the speed of the experience uh, to how much, to what degree should that be considered in yeah. the, in the value system? I would love a follow-up. If you come to a conclusion on that, I, uh, you know, let me know, let us all know. That would yeah. Be yeah. You don't have to spend too and much I time. That, on I think that addresses Gina's question uh, that you're going to get back to us. Does a tortoise that lives over a hundred years have more sentience than a chicken or a human? Uh, yeah. so you'll, you'll let us know what your okay, opinion so, is on that in yeah. the future. Okay. okay. I believe slaughter is human animal cruelty is probably a certainty for you. If you assume that the sin, that, that the animal in question is sentient, would you say that that's true? That, uh, that one just leads to another deductively, just logically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you say certain, you know, I always, uh, go with a 99% if okay. it's something that, you know, I, I try to never go a hundred in case I'm wrong, you know, want to be, yeah. but yeah, basically, basically be like, I think I'm 99% sure that animal cruelty is morally wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I hold that 1% that maybe animals don't actually exist and I'm just hallucinating or being sure. tricked by a demon. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. We, we, we both might be plugged into the matrix or any number of other options for that. Mm -hmm. Or, or also based on my definition earlier, we were talking of, of cruelty. We were kind of talking about how it's unnecessary. Um, at, you know, that was one of the things I mentioned was that it's unnecessary. Okay. So necessity uh, changes yeah. the equation. Right. Right. And so uh, if it turned out to be necessary for us to slaughter animals, then mm -hmm. would it still be cruelty under that definition? I mean, it's still, I feel like it's still, and this might be going back on the original definition that I gave to cruelty, but I feel like even in a time of necessity, um, if I intentionally kill, intentionally and knowingly yes. kill, that's still cruel to them mm -hmm. because like they didn't do anything to deserve that or anything, but I, it's at least, um, understandable. I don't. I don't know if it's morally justified because, like, maybe the most moral thing to do would be to die for the animal rather than to eat them. But then you would be losing your own life and all the positive uh, things that you could bring to other people right. and animals in society. Whereas okay. that animal that you sacrifice yourself for can't do all that. Um, so, uh, so morally, I'm oh, hearing that there's an offset for necessity and the balance between the needs of the different critters. Uh, the human and the animal uh, in, mm. in the question. And so there might be a scale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll give this example, like, uh, you know, as a vegan, I, you know, animals are killed in the production mm. of plant foods that I eat. And that sucks. You know what I mean? Like, I wish I could live in a world where I caused zero harm. Mm -hmm. but question. What do you think of eggs? 
Yeah, it's extreme. It's a, side, it's a totally side question. What That's do you think? It's extreme animal torture in the egg industry. The norm, okay, 99% of animal products come uh -huh. from factory farms. And these okay. animals, like, for example, male chicks on their first day of life are tossed into a, uh, put onto a conveyor belt yes. and thrown into a macerator and ground yep. up alive because they're yep. a waste product to the egg industry because they're males and they don't lay eggs. Yep. And they won't, yep. that breed won't grow big enough to become a meat bird. So um, by the billions. Yes, by the billions. Yeah. And, uh, and even, there's no concern for their experience. Yeah. Now, if you have some situation like, you know, best case scenario, you like your bird right there. If you had yeah. a female who was laying yeah, eggs, here. Her unfertilized eggs, that's what most of the eggs, they're not, it's not like a little baby bird abortion. Oh, they're fertilized. <laughs> right. They're, My, Miles is a happy boy. <laughs> These are fertilized eggs. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. But let's imagine they were unfertilized eggs so that we can take that, that issue out of it for a second. Because oh, most, okay. eggs, you know, but um, in that case, it's kind of like you can feed the eggs back to them so that they can replenish the calcium that they lost in producing these eggs. Yeah. And, uh, or you can leave the egg with her so that, she, you know, because when you take the egg, they can think, oh, I got to make a new egg. And yes. it, like their, you know, their body responds to that. And, we use uh, fake eggs. and it hurts them. Because they've been bred to overproduce eggs, like 30 eggs a month instead of one. Yeah. It's their menstrual cycle. And like, so uh, so we need to stop breeding them into existence where their bodies are prisons of pain. So with these girls, I, I we leave fake, egg, fake eggs in the nest to, mm -hmm. again, try to, yeah. I don't know if it's suppressed, but at least not accelerate the, the um, uh, egg production. And I don't feed them back. Uh, the food I get for them has all that stuff. Yeah, that might be fine. And I eat them myself. Okay. Well, I have two sources of eggs. I have you. my own birds, which uh -huh. are probably, you might just say, morally distinct eggs from the ones I buy at the store. Right. Um. So, yeah. So the best case scenario, the only problem with that, I would say, is that, it, well, in addition to your health and the cholesterol of it and stuff, um, but also the uh, environmental impact that raising birds uh, or any animals mm -hmm. has on the planet uh, because of the feed conversion ratio. Uh, yep. So if everybody were to be doing this, we'd have it, it would have to be like everybody would have to have a bird or multiple birds if they want eggs. Yeah. So this wouldn't be scalable. Um, and also, uh, like I said, a lot of them, it, it hurts them to do this. Um, and we don't, I don't want to um, promote the idea that these things are a food source. Um, it comes out of a chicken's butt for one, well, and it's really unhealthy and bad for the environment overall, but also um, it's, uh, you know, when we, when we eat it in the best case scenario, it can mm -hmm. Kind of, even if you give the warning as often as possible that I only eat it in these circumstances and I don't get it from the grocery store. Um, but even still, you know, it can kind of reinforce that social idea yeah. that animals are uh, food resources to be used yeah. and exploited. Well, I am the audience you're trying to reach because I eat meat, I eat, I eat eggs, I eat dairy, I eat all the things. And, and I'm very much the person that if you were to convert would have high impact on the, on the question. Yeah. So I want to be open. Um, in this case, uh, I and this is kind of a cul-de-sac because really we've gone outside your claim. Uh, maybe you would agree that my eating my bird's eggs is not cruel. Um, cruel only in the sense of like, okay, where'd you get the bird? Where, where did you get the bird? Originally, Miles and Carrie came from somebody who was adopting them out because they couldn't take them with them. So it was a neighbor who was leaving and uh, and said, here, would you like these birds? Yes. We already had other chickens. Uh, and then I got a few other birds from a bird breeder mm. to refill. And that's probably different. Yeah. Right there. The first, case, one, the I, first thing you said, the, uh, mm -hmm. I want to applaud you quickly, though, for the first thing that you said of adopting mm -hmm. a bird. And, you know, that's a rescue animal. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, these, sure. these animals who already exist need homes. And that's why yeah. same with adopt, don't shop with dogs and cats, you know. 
so that they don't get euthanized. But uh, but of course, yeah, with the issue with the breeder, you know, it's giving them money to continue breeding. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Because- right. I, I've also had a relationship with a uh, with a, a f- feed supply store that okay. allows me to take my spare, say, roosters or whatever comes out of my own the them managing to get eggs that I don't catch. Uh, mm. uh, uh, we managed a little bird named decoy. <laughs> mm. uh, and we, we adopted him out to their thing. Now the thing is, is, is their flock a breeder flock? It kind of muddies the waters if they're sure, yeah. adopting I... flock and a breeding flock at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they need to stop the bad part and keep up the good part. <laughs> uh, good and, and and what I'll say though is like this kind of edge case, you know, like sure. I'm less, I'm way less concerned about that. That's not, I don't spend much of my time talking about backyard right. eggs. Though I will recommend a YouTube video by Earthling Ed called okay. uh, "Why Vegans Don't Eat Backyard Eggs." Um, okay, Earthling Ed, why vegans don't eat backyard eggs on cool, YouTube. Cool. Uh, but yeah, it's 10 minutes. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Uh, staying real narrow on the question of cruelty then. Um, mm-hmm. how co- I want you to pick the animal that you think is, that's, that's not human. Mm-hmm. Yes, humans are animals. Of course we are. Uh, pick the animal that's not human that you think is most likely sentient. Uh, uh, we'll go with a pig pig and how what's your confidence that the pig is sentient 99 percent. cool now i'd like you to pick an animal that's somewhere in the middle of the pack mm-hmm. uh, um between let's uh, assume that mollusks or uh-huh. aren't. okay uh let's see hmm again uh i did not study biology too much sure. uh and and so that's, this is only uh, your confidence. To sure, what degree sure. are you convinced? And I don't hold you as an expert on that question. Cool. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, I I would think some kind of insect or lizard maybe with that reptilian brain, okay. you know, um, uh, maybe some kind of uh, sea creature uh, okay. that, you know, yeah, but uh, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Okay. So let me just pick one and call that the fish. The basic fish, like if I threw my hook in, Mm. I pulled out a fish that was on this order. How, what's your confidence? Yeah, I know. All right. Catch and release. No, don't do that, man. It hurts them. Okay. (laughs) All right. I'll say it this way. There's a fish in an aquarium. (laughs) Ah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I'm in a pond and, and, okay. I'm scuba diving. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I, 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 bathe their home. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I used to scrape the bottom of boats as a scuba diver. Okay. Clean the boats. When mm-hmm. I did so, I would attract literally a thousand fish mm-hmm. to hang out about one or two meters below me and eat the salad that I'm yanking off of there. Most of that salad, I bet you're going to say, is not sentient, even though others would say they are animals in many cases. Okay. We'll leave that aside. I'm talking about the fish below me. Okay. What's your confidence that those fish are individually sentient? 99%. Okay. Yeah, the science cool. is clear. The science is clear, and you can do any kind of search for fish sentience, and you'll find uh, like scientific literature on it. Cool, cool. Yeah, they have brains and nervous systems. They feel pleasure and pain. They have uh, friends and families, unless you know they're, they're mm-hmm. some of them maybe you know a solitary animal. Um, and yeah, the desire to continue living. Uh, it hurts them when they get hooked or when yes. they get dragged up out of the ocean. Um, uh, in the big nets, um, you know, we'll just take a, 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 a giant net from a boat, mm-hmm. just trawl up everything, including what, you know, turtles and dolphins and everything just to get the fish. They mm-hmm. stuff or they uh, they get squished by the weight of the fish on top yeah. of them. And uh, they panic when they dragged out of the water because they can't breathe. Right. You know, and if that's why they're flapping around trying to get back in the water. Uh, and to me, that's like putting a dog's head underwater or close enough to it. You know, yes. Yeah, I might yeah, still you, put, you, you pull them out and throw them on the dock. They are drowning now. Right. And I it's might, a lot slower for them than for us. Yeah. And fish are killed in the trillions. So we yes. uh, land animals across the world. We raise, feed and kill 70 billion land animals, which is 10 times the human population. How often but is that per year? 70 billion per year across per the year. world okay. for food that Ten we don't need. 
for fish. food that we don't need to eat. Yeah. Uh, but the number of fish is in the trillions and half of uh, the, the fish population that's eaten by humans is factory farmed fish as mm -hmm. opposed to wild caught 50%. So anyways, yeah, they suffer immensely. No need to uh, do this. Be nice to fish. I have three more questions on my agenda. Okay. Plus whatever the people in the comments manage. Oh, to yeah. throw in. Uh, and then we can get to anything that you've got. Sure. Uh, okay, so uh, th this question is, could you, it's kind of a request, could you steel man your opponent? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine somebody who disagrees with you and tell me why they disagree with you? Um, mm, I don't know if this is cheating, but I would, my instinct is to say just that they're not educated enough about the issue. This is, uh, that's but, a description of why. Can okay. you tell me what they would say? Yeah. Um, well, they might just be in denial that, um, animals are killed at a young age. For example, they might think, uh, you know, people often throw away, throw around the humane slaughter. Humane mm -hmm. slaughter doesn't exist. Um, euthanasia does like I put my dog down, um, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the shot, you know, peaceful, not, you know, when he was 14, because yeah. his quality of life had deteriorated to the point where it wasn't worth living. And I was doing him a favor and I would want someone to do that for me. Yep. I support the right to die for humans. I last had to do that in December of 19 with my beloved 12 year old cat. Oh, and yeah, yeah. She, right. she developed a, an intestinal blockage, and the, the surgery and everything else was going to be expensive, painful, and only extend her life by less than a year. Right, right. So I'm sorry I had to go through that, you know. Yeah. And it, well, yeah. I, have pets. It, it, I have enough pets that that is just something I have to get used to. Yeah, but they're our yeah. friends, you know, it's real. Yeah. Yeah, um, friends. And yeah, I would want them to treat me the same way if yeah. we, the roles were reversed. I yeah. would want to make the decision for them that I would want made for me in right. a similar situation. Exactly. And and unlike that, we would not want to be put in a slaughterhouse. Uh, now, right. now, I had no desire to eat my dead dog. Uh, but if I had, uh, it might not be immoral except for the fact that because no one's being harmed at that point. Right. Except, except for the fact that, you know, again, it's reinforcing that idea that animals are food and that can lead to more animal suffering uh, from mm -hmm. other people or uh, it, you know uh, I, I don't know. I could have given that meat to a wild animal who actually needed it, you know, yes. uh, in any case. Uh, so the, Okay, so they so steel manning their argument. Um, a, if they were to you know say, oh, it's all humane slaughter, and uh, and they're killed, you know, um, when they're about to die, anyways, of old age, you know. Okay. Uh, so those just aren't aren't true, right? So first of all, with the age of slaughter, um, most people don't know this, but like the natural lifespan of a pig is just like a dog, about twelve years old. But right. pigs are killed when they're only six month old six months yes six months old um because and that's similar for chickens or actually maybe even worse i think the natural lifespan of a chicken is between seven and ten years and right. and meat chickens are killed at seven weeks yeah seven weeks a month and a half old yeah um instead of seven years and uh and with cows uh their natural lifespan is 25 years but they're killed when they're 18 months old a year and a half old. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so the feed ratio yeah. would just get a lot worse yeah and so this is, feed ratio down yeah there's that but this it's like that's when they reach slaughter weight that's when they've eaten enough food that they're big enough to kill the reason that they reach that weight when they're children is because we force feed them and we uh have genetically modified and yeah. selectively bred them to uh yeah. eat more than they naturally would and to put on weight sooner uh into these like frankenstein bodies yeah, absolutely that we have um, domesticated them to be optimized for meat production Right. And so this is like killing a puppy. All right. Uh, the, I don't see any difference, you know, and okay. to say otherwise, I think it's just speciesism, uh, yes. which is just discrimination based on species, just like race or sexism. Yes. Uh, speciesism says it on my fucking shirt. OK. Yes. Anyway, so humane slaughter. So, uh, yeah, the definition of humane is compassion to show compassion or benevolence or kindness. Right. There's nothing nice about taking somebody's life, even if it's quick and painless, because that's murder. We wouldn't want it done to us. It's nicer if you have to choose between the two, but but we're not saying oh, yeah. not qualify as nice. I, exactly. I, yeah. So, you know, you could either torture and kill uh, or you could just kill and do it quick and painless or you could just leave them alone or if anything, rescue them from people who are trying to murder them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So humane slaughter just does. It's an oxymoron. doesn't exist. Uh, 
And even if the animals, uh, okay, well, if the animals were killed at their ripe old age, that's still, it's not euthanasia. It's not peacefully putting a syringe in and they're thrown into a slaughterhouse. But again, I guess we're trying to say best case scenario where like they don't see it coming. They don't feel any pain. It's right the day before they were going to die anyway. So it's yeah, essentially we, a we could come up with a slaughterhouse that was as um, subjectively no different from dying in their sleep or having a pet put down. We could do that if we wanted to expend the effort. Well, and, and that's not really the point that I think you're making. Well, it's not feasible. Uh, it's not uh, it's not feasible or practical to it's not uh, sustainable. Because again, for the environment, also and the feed. Oh, okay. But I'm I'm cool. strictly talking about your issue of cruelty, which has to do with the subjective experience of the animal itself. Right. Uh, well, I'm t I'm totally interested in your argument, especially maybe on another day, about sustainability right, and right. environmental impact and those mm -hmm. other things. And I want to stay laser focused on the cruelty yeah. question. Cool. If we had a slaughterhouse that was. Temple right. Grandin's perfect place. No, that's not good enough. But what you're trying to what you're trying to you know that's that's still cruel. But what you're trying to say is if it was like a veteran a veterinary's a vet veterinarian's office, a vet's office where uh -huh. they're fully get they don't know what's happening, they give it a syringe right. leap. Yeah, so a slaughterhouse that's like a vet's office. Uh, <clears throat> The problem, okay, and we would have to ensure, though, that they, you know, for this best case scenario, the steel man would be also that in the farming practice, the raising of them for that 10 or okay. 20 years was, you know, no bodily mutilations, no no cutting off their testicles with no painkillers as we currently do, et cetera. All right. So uh, best. Yes. Case, best, yes, that. Right. So best case scenario, something like that. Um, <clears throat> I think the problem, though, is that. It can it can easily lead, and I don't I don't want to make a slippery slope fallacy here fallacy here, but I think that you know it can lead to that. Like we might have just because I'm hyper focused on your one claim doesn't mean that you have to be <laughs> right. But I'm talking yeah. about I'm talking about the effects that this will have on society and animals in our society. Um, so if because if I start to eat the, the vet meat, <laughs> um and promote that and that's how we you know get rid of all the slaughterhouses uh the problem still might be that when we see animals as a resource as something to be objectified or i mean well it's you know it's used though it's after their life it still can lead to cruelty down the line for the sake of especially if this is a business they're seen as a commodity they're seen as so with capitalism and everything they're just going to be exploited for profit and so it's going to lead to more cramped conditions because they can house more animals in a smaller area and they're trying to save money and unless they're going to you know make the price of meat you know skyrocket to make up for those costs um and again, it, you know, it takes 25 calories of plants to make one calorie of beef, according to Yale. So I don't know if I answered your question well enough, though. You did. Okay. You did. Yeah, I think we've addressed the question of what uh, what an opponent would talk about. But if that was happening, if, 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 if meat, dairy, and eggs were produced in that ideal situation, uh, like a vet's office after – living in a farm that's similar to how I would raise a dog uh, and they're killed at the, you know, at the day before they would have died naturally or whatever. Um, then I don't know if I'd be an animal rights activist or at least for farm okay. animals, um, you know, because I'd probably focus on human rights more where like there's more actual abuse and murder happening and kind of stuff. Excellent. Thank you for making, being clear on that morals, on that moral statement. The last two questions are mirrors of each other. The first one is, what could you hypothetically learn tomorrow? This is something you don't know today, so you have to make up a new idea mm -hmm. that would raise your confidence that slaughter is animal cruelty, or maybe it would raise your confidence that a critter was sentient, uh, because that would Im imply something like that. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm big on scientific literature, so the more um, peer-reviewed journals that come out from reputable sources uh, that use the proper scientific methodology. And um, so the more papers that come out that confirm 
uh, that animals are sentient, just like we have already plenty of research on this, but the more, the better. And, uh, and, and I would want to make sure that these studies, uh, and meta analysis, uh, meta analyses, right. Uh, so there's a, there's a scientific, er, the scientific hierarchy of evidence. So like down at the bottom, you've got like anecdotal evidence, you know, like I had this experience, um, and then, and you've got different steps, like, you know, a, a case study. And then I can't remember all of them, but the highest one is a meta-analysis and uh, which looks at a bunch of different studies. Uh, so, so long as, yeah. So I think that would be the uh, main thing. I'll say though, real quick though, that one of the things that uh, helps reassure me is that I very frequently, like I've talked to thousands of people about animal rights and it's very common that they will agree or at least say they agree. And it seems like they're genuine. I don't think they're just trying to pacify me, but um, they, they agree with the animal rights philosophy. They, they agree that animals shouldn't be killed needlessly for our taste buds. They just lack the willpower. Uh, because they've, you know, like I myself, it took me a while um, to find the courage and the strength and conviction to make this change for animals because I was so, you know, culturally indoctrinated and just, uh, you know, I had my habits that I didn't want to let go of and I had my ego that I didn't want to let go of that I'm like so much better than animals that I can slit their throats. Cool. The other question, which you can predict, is hypothetically moving you down. And I think you already answered it's the same thing, right? Uh, yeah, more scientific literature. Yeah, yeah. That somehow discredits the uh, literature that already exists that's in support of my position. Yeah. Cool. Or, or if I were to somehow be convinced that I am hallucinating and that animals actually don't exist. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So if base ontology is somehow different, we're in the matrix, then you could reevaluate and determine if they're just made of bits. Yeah. Or like the problem of hard solipsism. But whatever. Yep. 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 Not likely. Uh, yeah, I don't want to operate under those conditions. <laughs> can't do it. Can't. I can't disprove hard solipsism, but I also have nothing to indicate it. But that's mm -hmm. a topic entirely. The audience is split on as to whether they want to hear Miles. Uh, some people find Miles annoying, and other people find Miles perfect for the conversation. So I'm going to compromise and keep myself muted while you're talking. And otherwise, if Miles pox over me, bring it, baby. That's cool. Um, last, uh, uh, Quaid asks, or something, there's something like a question in here. There's a question in this somewhere. A lot of people have been talking about how ethical pet ownership is. I'd be interested to know your views on that. Yeah. Uh, I was mentioning earlier, adopt, don't shop, right? Because, mm -hmm. uh, there's like a million, uh, dogs and cats in shelters in the U S that yep. are killed every year. Um, because there's not enough people adopting because they're buying from breeders. And yeah. uh, so, so there's already animals, uh, both, you know, uh, farmed animals as well, uh, that, that need homes, you know, they need rescue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of our cats are, are rescues and mm -hmm. all of our neighbor cats that we have been able to trap mm -hmm. have been cruelly mm -hmm. trapped, held into cages, yeah. pushed to a clinic Mm -hmm. Dosed with things until they fall asleep, and surgerized to you to to until right. they can't breed anymore. Okay, loved on until they can be released and then fed. Yeah. So sometimes we have to choose like the lesser of two evils. Like sometimes mm -hmm. my feeling is like sometimes you're in a corner where there is no moral option. You just have to choose the less the least immoral yeah. option. Yeah. Um, That's what we found to be our least our least immoral option is right. capture, spay, neuter, and, uh, and it's still, support. It could also still be viewed as a moral thing to do because you are saving, you know, you're improving their situation though. You're mm -hmm. doing some things that, you know, like restrict their freedom or violate their bodily autonomy. If, yeah. if it has an overall positive effect, even if they don't realize it at the time and they're going through fear, it's kind of like, you know, taking the child to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't understand, but yeah, Gina's cat Pippin is a rescue kitty and a gift about 15 years ago, nice. probably tomorrow, 15 years ago. But anyway, precision is not the important point. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you. That was the, that, that was the answer from Quaid. What's your argument? Um, um, one other thing about pet ownership that we're, or, first of all, we shouldn't call it ownership. 
uh, because they are not our slaves. They are not our property. They are not objects. Uh, they are our friends and we are their caretakers yes. or because their, their guardians or whatever you may have it. We're their humans. Okay. I can agree with you, but my local society forces that right. I acknowledge ownership and responsibility and liability. I and they call that ownership. Yeah. And and I treat them like friends as much as I can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the other thing, though, is what do we feed these animals? This is often talked about. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you have a dog or cat, do you feed them meat or, you know, dog food that, that has animal products in it? Mm -hmm. No, because the science is clear on that as well, that okay. dogs and cats, dogs and cats can thrive uh, on a appropriately planned plant based diet. OK, so you can look up those uh, scientific literature on that. Sakatomi asks, is it okay to physically mutilate an animal in order to be able to keep it as a pet? And I will say all of my pets have been physically mutilated by being rendered sterile. Sure. So it depends. Yeah. If we're talking about that, then uh, as opposed to like clipping their ears or their tails off, you know, for cosmetic, or, you know, that's not cool. Um, but even, even if it's under painkillers. Um, Unfortunately, but all the ones we've had to capture because mm -hmm. of rules beyond our control also have to have their ears clipped so that they don't get recaptured and attempted to have be respayed. If, if they're allowed to be outside stray cats, we There's don't have another, a choice. There should be another way to mark them rather than, uh, you know, you can, I don't know what, but you don't need to be cutting cats ears, not you, but them. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's the system I have. It's the best choice I, I have available. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but they need to fix that problem and we should speak up about it. But in any cool. case, uh, yeah, uh, bodily mutilation, though, as far as, you know, like spay and neuter, um, mm -hmm. I think it's more important to spay and neuter so that we stop having these animals yeah. breeding. Um, and also, we, you know, it's pretty it's, uncomfortable. It's kindness to the kittens not being having being given a, 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 a useless and horrible life. Right, Maybe short, brutish, right. and and nasty, and those words. Yeah, so that's about it. Yeah. Okay. After talking about this, has your confidence in any of this shifted in any in any direction? Nah, but well, I appreciate you. You did mm -hmm. great. You asked wonderful questions. I remember several times where you made me think of things that I hadn't thought of and that I will need to reflect on. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing that I, I think would like potentially sway. I don't think it's going to move you one way or the other. It's just the question of whether that one balance about lifespan versus experience rate, hmm. and it's a nuance. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I, I'm not. Sorry. Uh, you've you've dropped a bit. Could you repeat the last fifteen seconds? You've dropped a bit. Could you repeat the last 30 seconds? I think you're gone about a minute now. It's the refresh dance. It's the refresh dance. Skunkman asks, sorry if asked already, but you, would you be for the eventual extinction of animals bred to be unable to survive without human intervention in their lives? I'm thinking pugs. Uh, also, should we interfere with wild animals? Uh, I don't know if, if Chase is going gonna, is gonna to be able to make that back or not. Uh, should be... A link down in the description. Uh, this is Chase's uh, YouTube channel where he has all sorts of cool videos on the topic that we just spoke about today, uh, about being kind to animals and not being particularly mean and unjust to them. Uh, and uh, I, I, I suggest if you're interested, go check that one out. Yes, we have lost Chase. Perhaps he will come back. Uh, another question, how can we know that this is or isn't the life they want? Um, I'll ask if he comes back, and I'm going to imagine that we can't, because we can't communicate with them, know what their actual desires would be. So the best we can do is to honestly 
project or attempt to understand based on, um, uh, uh, you know, based upon our own assumptions, which we admit are flawed. And so, of course, we would have to, uh, you know, err on the side of compassion if we're uncertain about a thing. Oh, yeah. Pugs need to go extinct yesterday. Um, I hear that. Anyway, uh, thank you, Chase, for coming along the show and, and giving us uh, uh, your your well-considered opinion. And uh, I, I appreciate this. Let us know when you... Aha, uh -huh, and you're back. What's up? What's up, man? Man. These computers these days. Them computers, man. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, Couple questions from the audience. Skunkman asks, sorry if I ask already, but would you be for the eventual extinction of animals bred to be unable to survive without human intervention in their lives? Whoa, hold on. Sorry if uh, but would you be for the eventual extinction of animals bred to be unable to survive without human intervention in their lives? Hugs was the example we were talking about. What do you mean, hugs? Pugs. P -G -S. Oh, it's they, they almost they they almost have to go with c-sections and they can't live outside of air conditioning because yeah. their noses are too human humanified yeah yeah i would say we should stop breeding uh those animals into existence because it hurts their bodies uh but also because uh there's already animals who exist and they need to be rescued and we don't want to have to grow more plant foods to feed all these animals because also like i said uh, like little insects or, or, you know, are, are sometimes killed in the harvesting of crops sure. for vegans to eat or for um, plant-based animals that we, you know, our friends to eat. And so if we're growing more crops just to feed animals that we're breeding into existence when we mm -hmm. don't need to, then that's more crop deaths. That's more animals in those fields that get killed. It's usually just insects, not rodents, but. Okay. There's a second question, and I think you already answered it, but I invite you to expand. Also, should we interfere with wild animals? Right. So great question. I think that if we can, we should. And that means that we don't want to destroy the ecosystem or have an overall negative effect on the different groups of animals in that area. Mm -hmm. But uh, but if there were a way, which maybe there will be in a couple hundred years once we have a vegan society and we, you know, get rid of capitalism and, uh, you know, make enough resources for all of us. And like, for example, there's lab grown meat already. And as that technology, you know, which is just uh, animal flesh uh, made in a lab without any animal slaughter. Uh, they just extract cells from a living animal without hurting them and then make the meat in a petri dish and then they can like replicate that i think and so uh so they can make a whole bunch of meat is way better for the environment and we could feed that to the lions in the wild right and then mm -hmm. and this is super hypothetical it might not work but the hope would be uh feed the lions this meat um and this lab meat and like separate and you know maybe that will pacify them so they don't even feel the need to chase the gazelle um and then we we could also maybe just keep the gazelles away from them exactly yeah we could maybe put a giant fence we still want them to all have a huge area to roam but maybe we could separate them but then we want to worry about the the deer overpopulating right so mm -hmm. to, to kind of like thin out the herd if necessary because otherwise they might eat all the vegetation and that might negatively affect all the other wildlife right because uh, they might not have enough food to eat so the deer maybe we could uh, you know in, maybe instead of shooting them with a bullet maybe we could shoot them with a little dart that uh or or introduce into their food supply some amount of birth control or sterilization okay. So that they don't overpopulate, but they so also don't man manage through birth control sterilization or like what I do with my birds is I steal the eggs. Yeah. And and put decoy eggs. Yeah, we didn't we didn't get back to about fertilized eggs. That almost would have to be a separate show. Along with this would also have to be a separate show. Could we explore the claim that carnivorous animals can survive with an on-meat diet? Yes, Joshua, we could on a show. Bring it. Or have Chase bring it with you. Or however, separate show. Good. And, uh, and I did mention already, though, that dogs and cats can eat a uh, plant-based diet and be healthy. And uh -huh. there's plenty of science on that that you could just do a search for. 
Yeah. So Joshua and, and Chase, you might work together with Quaid here on what's your argument. Uh, they, the Quaid has their own argument around this issue you'd like to explore. Ooh. So great. Uh, it sounds like a collab. <laughs> yeah. So, so long as you completely agree with me, I'm down. <laughs> Is there anything that I didn't ask that I should have asked or that you'd like to add? Um, uh, it's hard to say if there's something well that you didn't ask. I'm trying to now think back. Uh, like uh, it's hard. I don't want to put too much pressure on you since you're not super familiar with this topic. So I think you did a great job given that. Um, of course, there's additional questions that could be asked. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to kind of think about SE type questions though. So I'm thinking back about the videos of uh, interviews you're, that I. You're not with. restricted to SE at all. You can okay. have anything you want to. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's a couple other things I wanted to talk about, but I, I was just thinking for a second about any kind of additional questions. But maybe the SE community that's watching mm -hmm. can provide those because you guys might be able to do that better than me right now. So anyways, I guess what I'll just wrap up with is, um, you know, most people that most most meat eaters that I talk to are against animal cruelty. Uh, you know, we fund it, though, mm -hmm. you know, and when we buy these products, yep. but in theory, at least most people are against it. And, and specifically like kicking an animal, we all think it's wrong to kick an animal needlessly. Yeah. The animal's just chilling. Right. So like pigs, when we see somebody kicking a pig in a farm in a factory farm video, you know, we're, we're pissed off. Right. Uh, Cause it's unnecessary. It's yeah. cruel. Right. It causes harm. Um, but if we think it's wrong to kick an animal, isn't it worse to kill them? Like, isn't, isn't stabbing worse than kicking? Like imagine that they only get kicked once. We would think that's highly immoral. Mm -hmm. um, but if they get stabbed once, we think it's okay. But that causes loss of life, even if it's quick and painless, like a, a bullet in the head um, mm -hmm. and they don't see it coming and stuff. Uh, that again, we like, that's like being murdered in your sleep. You know, it takes away everything you have. Uh, mm -hmm. You're, you're there, they're, they're complete existence their entire lives all the future enjoyment they would have had all their friend and friends and family relationships destroyed for our taste buds you know mm -hmm. and uh and so if we're you know if we're against kicking animals we should be even more against killing them because it's mm -hmm. more harmful are you familiar with temple grandin yeah okay uh do you do you think that she or her position or her goals or whatever are an opponent or a friend of yours or maybe something different opponent i mean okay. you know like some sometimes people help in some ways while hurting in other ways and that's yeah. kind of what's going on there um animal welfare is uh like a joke um because mm -hmm. uh, you know i mean to some degree okay like of course if if it's better for a bird to live in a cage this big mm -hmm. than to live in a cage this big Mm -hmm. sometimes that's all they get yeah. after give a, you a little room after a big, <laughs> a big legislative process and all mm -hmm. this that's all they get um so and, and and even still um sometimes it stays that small and and they just violate the law and get away with it uh and undercover investigators will expose it or uh so but yeah incremental process progress can be helpful uh, mm -hmm. But it also can make people complacent with the animal cruelty, well, animal cruelty mm -hmm. that they're still supporting because it makes people think, oh, I'm buying humane, I'm buying free range or cage free. But mm -hmm. we do investigations left and right. You can find them on YouTube. Just type in free range cruelty, grass fred cruelty, whatever, humane okay. summer cruelty, and you'll see. So it's a, mar it's a marketing scam uh, to make people feel comfortable with this. Uh, and, and people want to live in denial. I know I did, you know. Mm hmm. Um, and then I guess, uh, yeah. So, you know, again, just to wrap up, if you kick somebody, they're going to have a bruise, but they'll get over it in a day or two. All right. If you kill them, that's it. Game over. Not cool. And that's why murder is, is, is such a higher legal penalty than kicking. Okay. Uh, okay. and then, uh, so just to wrap up with, uh, speciesism is like racism and sexism. It's discrimination mm -hmm. 
against animals or certain animals simply because they were born yep. different. Um, so if we say it's wrong to kill a dog, but fine to kill a pig, that would be speciesism. Or if we say humans matter, but animals don't, that would be speciesism because we're yes. another group of animals. Nobody gets to choose what body they're born into, and there's nothing wrong with being different. These are arbitrary factors similar to race or sex. Uh, and so we just need to expand compassion to everybody and justice yeah. uh, and not, not have this in-group bias. Uh, and a lot of times people will say that the difference between humans and animals that makes it okay to kill animals, but not humans is that animals aren't as intelligent as us. And while I grant that, um, that's an ableist argument. Okay. Intelligence, uh, intelligence level is a, another arbitrary factor. Nobody can control that. I mean, you can go to school and learn more, but you, you're born, you're born with the brain you got. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, if you're against ableism, then stop using it as a justification for cruelty to animals. Uh, and then I talked earlier about an example of uh, with District 9, that movie of mm -hmm. humans oppressing aliens because they're not human. But here's another uh, thought experiment, a little hypothetical. Like imagine that there's aliens out there and they're stronger and smarter than humans. Like mm -hmm. to the degree that, you know, we're smarter and stronger than the next animal below us. Uh, these aliens are that much higher than us. And yes. they, so they're the dominant species. They're the apex uh, species. But, and so they come to earth and they start to treat us the way that we've been treating certain animals. They uh, enslave us. They torture mm -hmm. us. They, uh, you know, they, they cut off our, our testicles with no mm -hmm. anesthesia. Um, they clip our ears and, and cut our teeth so we can't bite each other in these cramped conditions where we go insane and attack each other, mm -hmm. right? Like stuck with 10 people in an elevator for your whole life. Uh, so they start to do us and then, and then they're coming and they're killing our babies in front of us. And then mm -hmm. they're coming at us with the knife and we're pleading for mercy. And we're saying, please, Mr. Alien, like I want to live. Like, it doesn't matter that I'm different than you. Like, you know, I got friends and all this and the aliens are just like, who cares about you? You're not an alien you you know you're just a mere human uh you're not part of our group sorry mm -hmm. you should have been born an alien if you wanted to have rights <laughs> yeah. uh, and so uh, but the funny thing is though that like two percent of the aliens are vegan aliens and they're saying to the other aliens who are oppressing the humans hey guys why don't we be nice to the humans like it doesn't matter that they weren't born like us what matters is they're sentient and you know they want to live they feel pain uh mm -hmm. so and we can eat these these plants we have vegan food that us aliens can survive on so let's just be nice but you know what's happening is the the animal or the aliens who are eating the humans are laughing at the vegan aliens saying what do you care about these stupid humans for they're not as smart mm -hmm. as us they're not as strong as us. We're higher. We matter. They don't. Or we'll be nice to them. We'll, no, we'll humanely kill the humans. Right. So it's just speciesism again. The aliens are discriminating against humans because we're a different species, just like humans discriminate against animals for not being our same species. And mm -hmm. so if we do that, if we support killing animals like this, if we support speciesism against animals, then we've got no right to say it's unjust or unfair for the aliens to do it to us. That is such a good last word. You okay yeah. if we end on that? I have one last word. Which yes, is, please. Sometimes we just lack the motivation, and it's a lot easier if you have a social network, if you have other vegans who are you know, encouraging mm -hmm. you in the right way. So seek those people out, even if it's just on Facebook. Look up vegan groups or something. Yeah. Uh, and try to you know, connect with people in your real life if you can. Talk to your friends and family about this issue because it's super important. Uh, watch Dominion on YouTube. That's that's so important. Dominion. Uh, Dominion on YouTube starring Joaquin. Can you, can you give me a uh, can you give me a link? I can pull up a share right quick. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how to do that on this system, but if you just go to YouTube and search Dominion, it's a documentary uh, starring Joaquin Phoenix and uh, from the Joker. And uh, and then but with motivation. So part of this is education where we just need to know what's happening and then connect with these beings and realize the, the justice, that justice matters so much to them like it does to us. Yes. Like these are babies and their mothers and we cut their heads off and it's not okay. Um, but as hard as this fight can be to, you know, have the, the bravery uh, to watch what happens to them and, and to be affected and to then take action can be hard, but yes. you are strong. We are strong 
and we can do this and the animals need our help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That's moving. And you can follow me on uh, YouTube if you want to see some crazy protest videos or debates. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, I, I am a big fan of street epistemology and I integrate it into my work a lot. Um, but I also been now known to get pretty loud in the streets. <laughs> uh, but yeah, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Chase Avier. Uh, but thank you, Dolly. Uh, I really appreciate all your work. Um, helping people learn how to think and analyze mm -hmm. uh, different situations and to be humble, to remember that sometimes we get it wrong, you know? Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you again soon.